we're at Taino Towers in uh, Spanish Harlem at Barrio, and I was just reminiscing that we actually shot one of the scenes of BX3M on this floor in the uh, Crystal Ballroom. Mona was in the prom scene with with um, with Jorge, who plays Seneca. So it was. Mona and Seneca dancing here on the terrace, and we created this other effect within the ballroom of these silhouettes of people dancing, because we didn't have that many people, so we kind of, kind of faked it and kept the same people walking back and forth and making believe they were dancing. And so it was really amazing to just come here now for this event and just reminisce about that. And also I want to give a shout out to Maria Torres, who's the manager of Taino Towers, for having supported us in our project, BX3M, que se trata de tres Latinos, adolescents growing up, okay, in the Bronx, but it applies to all of us. So, um, really, thank you so much, Maria, and everyone else who participated in this project. Thank you. Sometimes, when you love somebody, you can overlook a lot of things that you normally wouldn't. Don't. Hey, Mona, Sam here. Just returning your call. If you want to go to the drag show, let me know. I'll leave a ticket for you. You know the address. Hope you can make it. You've got to see these dykes. What's going on? I want you to be my girl. My woman. I can't. What's up, Michael? Your mouth, Mona. Tell them my woman my business. Don't talk to Mona like that. No, shut up. This shit? No, not this shit. This shit. Soy actriz de PX3M. ¿De qué país eres o de qué países latinas tienes raíces? Yo soy colombiana, nacida y me crié ahí. Okay. ¿Y qué te hace llegar aquí a, a Nueva York? Pues la verdad es de que recuerdo siempre haber querido ser actriz. Eh, y cuando me gradué del colegio allá en Cali, eh, me vine para los Estados Unidos a estudiar teatro. Hice la universidad en la Florida, en Alabama, y apenas me gradué me vine para Nueva York. Ok, mira qué bien. Entonces, ¿qué, qué has hecho acá en, en Nueva York? ¿Has sí. hecho teatro, cine? Sí, de todo un poco. Eh, hice varias obras de teatro, incluyendo musicales, eh, también he hecho student films, eh, unos cortos, eh, también bailo eh, en ese momento. Además de la actuación, bailo con una compañía folclórica colombiana que se llama Pajarillo Pintado. Entonces, ¿cómo es que logras adentrarte a trabajar con, con, con la directora Judy Escalona? Hice una audición, vi el casting eh, y mandé mi, mi headshot y mi resumen, que es lo que uno tiene que hacer. Me llamaron, fui a la audición y me dieron el papel. ¿Y cómo te preparaste para la audición? Eh, pues no, no tuve mucha preparación porque no recuerdo si me mandaron un libreto antes de, eh, fue más saber más o menos eh, quién era el personaje y tratar de irme vestida de una forma que yo pensaba que así se ver, vería el personaje y ya ahí leer la escena. Y entonces cuéntanos a fondo, ya cuando tienes el papel, eh, cómo es que te entrenas para lograr llegar a, a hacer el... el la, la, las diferentes escenas en, durante la filmación? Pues ahí fue ya aprenderme el libreto, estar bien familiarizada con las líneas, eh, conocer a los otros actores con quienes tenía escenas, 
ella fuera Jorge, ella fuera Jazmín, ella fuera Edmí de Jesús. Eh, y ya estando en, en los ensayos o ya haciendo las escenas, escuchar a, a la directora, eh, a ver ella qué necesitaba de mí, qué quería de mí. ¿Tienes algún método de, de actuación que llevas contigo, Stanislavski, o el estilo americano, o más o menos te dejas llevar por lo que sientes de acuerdo al, al, al reading? Sí, es la última. ¿Tienes algo que sacaste de ti misma para el, para el, para el papel? ¿Tienes algo como, por ejemplo, de Mónica yo? Yo creo que le añadí esto, o fue o reconstruiste el personaje completamente. Pues sí, eh, como con los diferentes personajes, eh, había cosas con las que yo podía eh, simpatizar o empatizar más fácilmente, eh, otras que no, pero igual al tener el libreto y saber la historia de Mona, entonces igual podía identificarme con ella de alguna forma. ¿Qué cosas en específico fueron las que tú decías? Esto y esto van a acorde. Eh, yo diría la relación de Mona con su mamá. Eh, ellas eh, eran muy cercanas, tenían una muy buena relación, no solo de, de, de mamá e hija, sino también como amigas. Eh, y esa es mi experiencia con mi mamá. Somos muy apegadas. ¿Qué fue lo más que te gustó durante la filmación? Estar trabajando frente a la cámara porque es lo que quiero hacer. I always tell my students, um, making a film is very painful. And you really have to love it, especially if you don't have any money. And so uh, BX3N was a no budget film. And so we basically relied on the community to support us, and they did. Like for instance, the place that we're in now, Taino Towers, Maria Torres, the manager, let us use the crystal ballroom for our prom scene. That was wonderful. Another person, the limousine driver, he gave us his stretch limousine whenever we could. When he wasn't working, he let us use his limousine for, again, the prom scene. Now, this was fantastic, and it was gratis. It was completely free. So um, that's very moving. When the film premiered at the Havana Film Festival in New York, Uh, just a couple of weeks ago at the Lowe's uh, 34th Street Cinema, who turned out? The community. And it was a full house and it was really wonderful to see them and very, very moving. And so I, I think for um, Latino filmmakers, uh, I think the link, that connection with the community is really significant. Um, so the hardships involved was basically every step of the way, uh, trying to find locations, uh, trying to really connect with um, actors, like finding the actors, the right actors for the parts. And we did, I think we did very well. Uh, we cast very good actors. The, one of the things that I realized was the pool of talent, of Latino talent that's available to us here in the city is incredible. They are so good. Uh, any one of them uh, so, could just step off our BX3M film into a Hollywood film very easily. I have no doubt about it, that their talent is just as good and at times even better than what we're seeing in, on TV. Really, I mean, I, I'm not even exaggerating. They're that good. And uh, I was really proud of my actors and how they performed. It was, uh, they're so excellent. It was in Milan already, it was in Berlin, and then it was in uh, Massachusetts, which is, you know, like the state. And then it was also in um, Pennsylvania, and now it was part of the Havana Film Festival in New York. It's going to the Dominican Republic in November of this year, 2018. And I would love to show it in Puerto Rico, and I just haven't had the opportunity to really um, Uh, access that. I know, I know the El Museo de, de Arte Contemporáneo was interested in it, but I'm not really sure what happened. Uh, you know, with the storm and everything, we got disconnected somehow and weren't 
hadn't been able to reconnect. And it, it was also uh, supposed to be in a Vieques film festival, but I, I think that that festival seemed really kind of really shaky. You know, it wasn't really a, a festival from Vieques proper. It was something that was coming in from the outside, and apparently it didn't really work out for them. So they they were going to screen it also, and, and that, that just it sort of disappeared, basically. Um, so I'm really looking forward to screening it actually all over Latin America. I also I have subtitles in Spanish, I also have subtitles in Italian and French. So I expect to be um, presenting it internationally. And uh, most importantly, the issues that are dealt with in the film have to do with love, lo teenage love, loving someone so much and maybe they're not really the right person. And another issue is uh, sexual identity. Uh, lastly, the trauma, a past trauma that really keeps a young person from really moving forward in their life. Uh, and those are those three narratives. It's Maria, Mona, and Michael. And so each one confronts a different e issue. And so it opens up this whole conversation. That's really what I want to get to is like the conversations that are opened up through the film because it doesn't really conclude and give you an answer, which is kind of more typical commercial film. It really, if anything, opens up a conversation on different issues that we're confronting today. And it shows like uh, the relationship between the parent and the, uh, the teenager, the young person. And that relationship, in many ways, is really critical for a child's success in the future. Okay. And how was the process of writing of writing the the feature film? How long it did was, it take? It was. It was very. It actually, uh, it's kind of a funny thing about me is that I could sit down and sort of like knock the whole thing out, like go, oh, okay, and then so and so said this, and then another person said this, and then the other person said, oh, and that's it, and then. You know, sort of just having a very clear sense of where it's supposed to be going thematically, where's the through line. And so the scenes sort of kind of shape themselves. And uh, I think I have a very clear sense of character and, and um, just structure is really important. It isn't just simply having something that's episodic, like a string of scenes. It's really a, a very specific type of structure that moves forward. One of the things interesting for me too in making VX3M was that one thing was to write the film. After the film was written, I had to read it as a director and say, okay, what is this film about? I had to ask myself about my own film, about the script that I had written. What is this film about? And now from a director's perspective, I had to realize that visually and be able to tell the actors how I wanted them to move and what the emotion and purpose of that scene was, how it was working. At least contour it, not necessarily explain it to them, but at least really shape it in the direction it had to go in. And so it was, it was really interesting to, to see how it's a different role and function and how that really alters one's perspective. Good. That sounds great. Yeah. When you was in the process of casting, when did you know that you were like, okay, this is this is the right cast? Like, how many, cuántos días de casting tuviste que hacer? ¿Cómo fue el proceso? ¿Te tardaste mucho tiempo? Yeah, I think uh, the casting was like an ongoing process. Um, it's, um, I uh, have my own way of auditioning people. I, yes, yeah, certainly I have really the sides or the script. But um, really what's most important is to see what the, the actor brings on his or her own. They would do a monologue and then I, I, I asked them, I really am interested in range. And so I want them to do the same piece, let's say, in a funny way, and then I want, to, want them to do the same piece in a tragic way. So I'll say, 
okay, they do their monologue, whatever it is, and then I'll just say, okay, now do it as if you won like a million dollars in lotto. And then I'll say, okay, now do it as if you just learned that your mother died. And there I could see if one has the range or if they're just sort of, just basically, they don't have it and they're just repeating really the same speech or monologue and, and it's really amazing to see that happen. But I, I love actors and uh, you know, I see the risk that's involved in, in having that vulnerability and being willing to just express oneself that way. When, when your, your instrument is yourself, that's pretty intense. I, I love them. How long was the process from like writing, pre-production, production, post-production, and picture lock? The, the writing was relatively quickly, and it happened over several. Actually, happened over several years because the first part I wrote really a long time ago, and then I just decided that I was going to shoot everything I've ever written before I die. I mean, that was really the whole point. So I just pulled a script that I had that was um, really uh, contemporary and that was immediately accessible because it's about, you know, an it's an urban story and it's contemporary. So I don't really have to worry about really, you know, costumes or, you know, period dress or, or somewhat. So, um, so I used BX3M and, and so I used so the, the writing was, becomes relatively easy for me once I sit down and start writing. Uh, the casting also it took several months and we were already shooting and you know there were issues around. Once we had the leads, that was it. The, everything else fell into place. The, uh, the uh, supporting cast too is really excellent. They're really good people. And so um, that worked. Without name dropping, there's Berto Bologna was in it, uh, Hasmin Karatini, who I understand is like uh, a star in Puerto Rico, and uh, her former husband, Jorge Luna, who's also excellent. And then the guy who plays, the man who plays um, Michael, is Mario, his name is Mario Eusebio, he's fantastic, what a great actor. All of these guys like brought so much to the roles that they play, all of them, the, the women and the, uh, and the men. Excellent. Like a couple of years. Huh? Like yeah, it took it took us a long, a really long time because after after we shot it, we shot it only on the weekends. So it took about uh, it took about a year because also people took off for the holidays, and um, so that's how that evolved. Uh, and it was just sticking to it, and, and you know, I mean, that could be a, con a continuity my nightmare, right? A continuity nightmare, like shooting only on weekends for a period over a year. We started with a really large crew in the beginning. By the end of the film, it was just me and the DP, the director of photography. I was driving the limousine for these you know, exterior shots of the limousine going down the streets and everything. And uh, my DP, who was wonderful, Ted Chichelsky, he was just setting up the camera on the Grand Concourse and would say, okay, go. And then I would just like drive. It was really outrageous, the whole thing. And, uh, but it, it was like uh, a lot of fun, but it was also ex excruciatingly painful. But it was a challenge that you know, we were willing to take on because it's, it's really, uh, I don't know, it's really exciting to make a film. And so we're, we're really getting ready to like, take another plunge and, and, and suffer the consequences for it in order to see this you know, like wonderful Thing that can emerge, uh, the actors, the, the talent that comes together to create one work. I mean, that's like brilliant. I mean, that has to be the greatest part, the greatest human experience is that a, a group of you come together to create something. So it took a long time. And then to edit, forget it, I, I had no money. First I tried to find an editor, that took forever. Finally I said, you know what, I have to cut my own film which was also a great experience. You know, it was challenging and it was very moving. It was very moving to go through the film. And now we're at the final stage of sending it to festivals and also um, really trying to find distribution. Hopefully that we'll able to, 
we'll be able to raise enough money to start another production. That's really have the goal. You, have you ever thought on, on streaming? Yeah, it's going to be streamed. It's going to be online. Uh, we're working with an aggregator, uh, and, and so they, are, they have the film. I have, actually, I have to upload it again, and I have to give them all the subtitles, and then they'll try to place it on different platforms. Okay, um, um, you said you mentioned that you have another projects. Uh, are they also feature films? They're all features. Okay. Well, yeah. How many you have? Uh, I have probably like four or five. I have one that's about Lolita Lebron, and that's that's one that I really want to develop now. I have another project that I won't mention the title, but it's something that I want to do in Puerto Rico. It's um, it has to do with. Um, yeah, I, I love Buñuel, so it's, it's a story that's from Puerto Rico, actually, that has to do with a, a male pathology. Now, that's not the way it was written. It was written as a story, like honoring this man. But actually, the, it's basically something very pathological uh, in terms of like uh, uh, the male character. And it relates to, f it made me think of a film well, actually, what I want to do to it uh, made me think of a film by Luis Buñuel that's called um, El, just E-L, El, that strange passion, and which is a wonderful film he made when he was uh, in Mexico, when he was living in, and, and producing films in Mexico. And you're the person that has a lot of experience. You're somebody that has a lot of experience, either as a filmmaker and also as a professor. What would be your advice to the up-and-coming young um, filmmakers that would like to pursue a career in, in the business? Well, the advice is to keep making films. You have to do a couple of things. One thing is to develop your own vision. Uh, I think that's really critical if you want to really, if you have, you have to find your voice. And you can only find your voice by constantly making films. And so you're doing two things. You're developing your craft, but you're also finding your voice and, and also your way of telling a story. The other part of this is that you need to study. You need to study literature, I think. Study literature, uh, study theater. Uh, so, you know, really get a sense of the dramatic form. The dramatic form exists in all different uh, written media, right? It could be in a novel, short story, play. In, 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 in all of these forms, you learn what character is, good character development, and also what the dramatic form structure is. Then, you know, then it can be adapted to different, to the screenplay. But at least you get a sense of, of really what good writing is, because writing remains a significant and essential part of, of a good film. You can't get away from it. It's because it, it provides the spine, the structure. You can't avoid it. You really need to develop that skill, unless you just want to be a DP or or you really want to direct other people's work. But in any case, you still. It can only enrich you to really uh, study these other forms. And, and that's what I would suggest. A good humanities background is excellent. You have to be able to talk to your actors. A lot of actors have training in the theater. And so you have to know, uh, you know a lot of the classics. And you know, the richness of today, I always say, is that you're not just use, learning one specific tradition, but you can learn several traditions that are open to you and you could combine it in different ways. But um, maybe that sounds like a lot, but it's actually a lot of fun. And uh, you learn a lot and it, and it helps you. It enriches your life generally. But keep making films. That's, that, there's no mystery about it. You have to make films.
sometimes, when you love somebody, you can overlook a lot of things that you normally wouldn't. Don't. Hey, Mona, Sam here. Just returning your call. If you want to go to the drag show, let me know. I'll leave a ticket for you. You know the address. Hope you can make it. You've got to see these dykes. It's bad. What's going on? Your mouth, Mona. Tell my woman my business. Don't talk to Mona like that. No, shut up. Excuse me, this shit? No, not this shit. This shit.